Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, I'll do a lab demo showing the basics of how a routing protocol works. So the lab topology, we've got those five routers again, R1 to R5, and I've already configured IP addresses on all of the interfaces. So first thing that I'm going to do is to configure a routing protocol. Now, the focus of this section is not on the routing protocol configuration. We'll get into that when we cover each of the routing protocols individually in their own separate sections later on. The point of this section is to show you the commonalities, the things that work the same on all of the different routing protocols. So I'm going to use RIP, the routing information protocol, for this demo, and I'll show you the configuration now. So I've got that configured in WordPad here. You'll see that you'll do this a lot in the real world as well. Where you have common configurations that you're going to use on multiple routers, it's easiest to write them down in a text editor, and then you can copy and paste from there. Also in the real world, you'll usually have templates that you'll use for common configuration for your routers and switches too. And whenever you provision a new router or switch, all you'll have to do is take that template, change the IP addresses in there, and then any other specific settings, and then you can copy and paste that into the router or switch. It makes it a lot easier that way. It also stops you from making errors as well. So that's what I'm going to do here. I've got my basic RIP configuration typed out in a text editor. So I've got router RIP to enable the protocol. I'm going to run version 2 rather than version 1. I'm not going to do automatic summary at the classful boundary. And I'm going to enable it on all my interfaces that are in the 10 network. Again, don't worry too much about the config for now. We'll cover this in more detail later. So I'm going to copy that from my text editor and then go to the lab and I'm going to paste this in on each of the routers. So I'll do it on R1, I'll also do it on R2, oops, R2, on R3. I should have put config T in the first line of the text editor and that would have made it a little bit easier for me. But that's okay, I can just type that in each time. So just exactly the same config on all of my routers. Now I'll go to one of the routers that was in the middle, that was R3. And I'm going to do a debug on here. So debugs are similar to show commands, but where a show command gives you a point in time snapshot information, debug information gets updated in real time. You'll see what I mean now. So just like show commands, debug commands get entered at the enable prompt, and I'm going to debug IP rip. And I should start seeing the updates being sent and received on here. So there you go, I saw a, a RIP update being received from 10.1.0.2. Let's just check the topology. So I'm on R3 right now, and 10.1.0.2, that was an update coming in from R2. I'm also going to see updates coming in from R4 on 10.1.1.1 as well. So R3 because I enabled the routing protocol on all my routers, they will form adjacencies, which each of their directly connected neighbors, and they will start sending updates to each other. Not just about their own directly connected routes, but about all the networks they've learned from the other routers as well. 
So R3 should receive information about the 10.0.0.0 slash 24, the 10.0.1.1 slash 24, and the 10.0.2.1 slash 24 network from R2. Uh, also the 10.0.3.0 slash 24 as well. It's also going to be sending out updates to R2 and to R4 as well. So if I jump back onto the command line, you'll see that, yes, it is sending and receiving updates. So if I scroll back a bit, you'll see that it's been receiving updates from 10.1.0.2, which was R2, and it's also receiving updates from 10.1.1.1, which is R4. It's also sending updates to those routers as well. So it's getting this information. If I now do a show IP route, you'll see that the routing table is updated. Actually, let me just turn the debugging off as well to save it um, updating anymore. The command to turn off all debugging is undebug all. After you've entered this, you might still see a, a few debug outputs coming in, but it will turn it off. So let's just scroll down a bit and do a show IP route, and you'll see that my routing table has now been updated. So you see the, the codes up at the top here tells you the way that that particular network was learned about, whether it's directly connected, a local route, whether it's a manually configured static route, or if it was learned from a routing protocol and which routing protocol it was learned from. So you see here the code R, if we look up a bit higher up here, and if I can find it there, R is RIP. So it learned the routes to the 10.0.0, the 10.0.1, the 10.0.2, and the 10.0.3 networks via RIP. Also on the left-hand side, 10.1.2 and 10.1.3. It is directly connected to all of the other networks. Well, with the example here, I didn't have any static routes set up beforehand, so the routers only knew about their directly connected interfaces. But when I enabled my routing protocol, they shared information with each other, and the routing tables are going to be updated on all the routers. If I jump onto R1 as well and do a show IP route here, you'll see it also knows about all of the networks in our topology, either directly connected or it learned them via RIP. Okay, so that's the basics of how a routing protocol works. We'll get a bit deeper into routing protocols starting with the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.